Hello, everybody. It's Dave Neal, stand-up comic and host of Bachelor Nation News, where you get all of the Bachelor news in one place. And dominating the Bachelor news for the latter half of 2023 has been the Clayton Eckerd paternity scandal. Some suggest we call it a harassment scandal. No, not him harassing somebody, but somebody actually harassing him. Uh, that being uh, who we have called Jane Doe, someone whose name and face we've never shared here. We have an update. Fans of Bachelor Nation have now written in a medium article uh, which shares a point of view different from the perspective she's trying to paint which is that she is a victim of cyber harassment cyber harassment by clayton eckard no cyber harassment by me yours truly uh again someone whose name and face i've never shared here well we're gonna read the response article to her claims and also cite some information that probably shows she's actually harassing me, including, you know, uh, something we'll get to by the end of this video here, which is her uh, trying to lead an investigation by the FBI, LAPD, Scottsdale Police, and so much other. So we'll have that. I'll also share how she uh, used uh, notices uh, to serve me with a restraining order as a form of, I don't even know what you would call it. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, harassment is, is one way to look at it. Why would you warn somebody you're getting a restraining order against them uh, with proof sent to their email from yours truly, Jane Doe? So I'll share all of that and we'll discuss that, but I want to get into the actual Medium article. Now, you may be finding my content for the first time. That's the way YouTube works. You don't always start from the beginning. We do have a whole Clayton Eckerd paternity scandal playlist. I suggest consuming that from the beginning. But if you are new here, hello, how are you? I've been sort of sucked into this case. The de facto designated driver of this case as we've sort of tried to just read the court papers and share an opinion. As you're going to find out, because of that opinion, we have been threatened with lawsuits of defamation. We are currently in a lawsuit uh, being sued for harassment, all these types of things. And all Jane Doe asks for is that I delete my videos. That's all she asks for. Just delete your videos, Dave, and I'll stop harassing and suing you. Well, we can't just do that, folks, because if we do that now, then it's, you know, it sets a very bad precedent for other content creators and the like out there. So we're going to continue to share respectfully what I believe to be the truth or at least the court filings and an opinion on what's going on here. So do me a solid, hit the like button, and don't forget, follow me on Instagram at Neal's Stand-up show on December 28th in Huntington Beach if you're in Orange County. Come check that out. I'll have info for that on the link tree in my bio there. And also, I'll be live at the 10 a.m. hour on Patreon if you want to support me throughout this court fight patreon.com slash dave neal every morning and afternoon bachelor rush hour at the hit podcast so where do we even begin with all of this well if you're new to the channel we really got into hot water from sharing these public court records that show that uh former uh a, a boyfriend of hers uh uh acute uh alleges that she actually had created a fake ultrasound that was reverse google searched and ultrasound technicians confirmed that she had actually pretended to be pregnant. Maybe she was, maybe she wasn't, right? But that's what was alleged in these court documents that we shared. She got very upset after we continued to share different court documents and made this uh, Medium article two weeks ago called Unveiling the Unbearable, My Battle Against Cyberbullying and Online Harassment. Now, you may be new to me today because yesterday she posted, I guess, like a reel, which was a mashup of my content. You know, I made probably a hundred hours of content and she put together... I don't know. I didn't watch it because I actually value my mental health, so I'm not watching it, but uh, snippets of things I've said probably out of context. So if you came from that, hi, how are you? I promise you we'll be as reasonable as possible. We won't share her name. She's the one who came forward with her name. She's the one who's linked herself to me. We've just been covering this more so to exonerate Clayton Eckerd. And if the evidence shifts... And it looks like Clayton is the father of her unborn babies and all these things. We'll be the first to cover it. We will be the first to cover it, folks. All right. So anyway, um, we're going to share the different uh, things that I think triggered her into making that reel last night, which she then deleted, I guess, half an hour later. But I shared these publicly available exhibits, which are in recent court documents here, that show wild email exchanges from her trying to coerce Clayton into having a relationship with her to the point where she said, it's the safest thing you can do right now is have sex with me. It's win-win. Having sex with me is the safest thing you can do. I'm already pregnant. If we choose to go this route and have sex or don't have sex, then we're at the point where okay so anyway you see all that it's wild folks i'm sure she didn't share this 
when she told her friend, friends and family she was being harassed. So anyway, let's get into it. I know it's going to take a little bit, but I'm going to read what Regina wrote here on Medium. Nobody told me I'd have to take accountability for my actions. For the purpose of clarity on some of the deceptive information she included in her post, Jane Doe original Medium article is quoted below. So far, Jane Doe has been able to get any and every post that details the timeline of her ha- harassment of Clayton Eckerd removed, while, she, while her own post that is full of deceptive information is allowed to remain. After attempting to report her post for rule violation, I was told that one course of action would be to write a response. Ah, the pen is mightier. But I'm sure this will also get taken down. But in good faith, I cannot continue to sit by while she perpetuates her victim narrative and restricts the free speech of anyone who has the courage to try to reveal the full picture of what has been happening. And by res- by um you know, uh, uh, restricting free speech, she's actually threatened to sue other podcasters who have a similar opinion of mine, which is that she's not pregnant. That's my opinion. Um, No harm to her. I just don't believe she's pregnant and certainly not with Clayton's kids. Uh, Maybe I'll be proven wrong, in which case I'll redact and update and apologize and all that stuff. Since September 2023, Jane Doe has been involved in a public smear campaign against Clayton Eckerd, known for being the bachelor on the ABC reality series, claiming that he is the father of her unborn twins. Once again, she has taken to Medium to post a lengthy article to paint herself as the victim of a story that she took public and continues to leave out important context that doesn't fit the narrative she is trying to sell the public. She has never been able to prove to provide verifiable proof that she is pregnant. She fails to mention her own harassment of Clayton Eckerd, which is what Dave Neal has been reporting on. She does not deserve special treatment by being able to silence everyone who tries to bring her actions to light. None of the interest online has to do with Jane Doe's reproductive history. As much as she'd like to say to make a clickbaity topic about women's reproductive rights, this is really about the lengths that Jane Doe is willing to go to in order to avoid responsibility for her own actions. Her most recent post is yet another attempt to deflect attention from the fact that she is not pregnant and has been backed into a corner. On November 2nd, 2023, in her testimony at Clayton's order of protection hearing against her, she claimed that she was 24 weeks pregnant with twins, with a due date of February 14th, 2024. When the day comes, she might very well use be using sensitive topics like miscarriages that women tend to avoid discussing as a cover for her own lies. This is not something that should be taken lightly. Cyberbullying and harassment is a very real and very scary thing. However, Jane Doe has failed to take any accountability for her own actions and how they have mentally and financially harmed Clayton and Dave. Bringing to light the harassment that she has inflicted is not cyberbullying. And of course, you know, uh, my $10,000 retainer check um, to a lawyer, which I, I tell you this, being pregnant uh, you know, delivering in the spring, not exactly the amount of money we just want to give away to the legal system here, but an amount of money we're willing to spend. And thanks to you for donating to the GoFundMe to defend just basic, you know, First Amendment freedom of press. Basic stuff, folks. She, um, so... She had put, so now, now we go back to the quote here uh, from what uh, Jane Doe had said. It's incredibly hard to put this into words and share what's been going on. I've never asked my friends or family for emotional support, but I'm feeling truly shattered, mentally drained, and worthless due to the events of these past several months. And she goes on and on about cyber talking. Um, she says, I've been absent from social media, pretty much detached from the life I used to lead. I can count on one hand the times I've stepped out of my home since then, but the number of times I found myself in tears is beyond calculation. And then we go back to Regina saying, mid-September is when she went to the media to continue her harassment of Clayton after he told her that he did not believe that she was pregnant and Jane herself was refusing a paternity test unless Clayton agreed to exclusively date her, which of course we've shared here in some of these different documents here, um, you know, that, uh, you know, there was a contract that was set. You can go look at those old videos. Um, if you date me for a week, um, then I'll then I'll let you decide what to do with the baby. Uh, you know, guys, just wild, wild stuff. Uh, We've already shared that all. Uh, This is when Jane went to The Sun, uh, you know, a smut rag gossip magazine. And in that article, it included how she had begun legal proceedings in Arizona, which allowed people to find out her identity through the website. This is when she also posted her first and second post on Medium where people started to notice how her story did not add up and how important context had been excluded. Jane Doe had not um, accounted for how many eyes, uh, how the... 
for how that many eyes on her story would also mean that people would be able to discuss and come together about how her story had glaring holes and was missing key information. Yeah, what she doesn't tell you when she talks about the cyber harassment is that just about everybody online was on her side. Oh, this is the anonymous victim. We support her. Clayton's the worst guy. And then they looked into it. And then they looked into it. And then they looked into it. And they changed their mind, which is what smart, rational people do. They change their mind with new evidence. While she claims she is being cyberbullied, she tries to use cyberbullying tactics as a way to hurt Clayton and scare him into silence, believing that he would do anything to protect his reputation. Uh, this is evidenced by an email that she sent to, which has been ex included in a publicly available document in his latest filing in the paternity case, where she included what would be her pregnancy announcement, which included the following. So this is her threat that she's going to post this on Instagram if he doesn't agree to date her. Uh, and I quote, on a more serious note, their father at Clayton Eckert has said he wants nothing to do with this process. He has blocked me from messaging him, refuses to see me and his growing babies and says he will continue to ignore me. He doesn't want to have anything to do with them when they are born and thinks they will negatively impact his dating life. Tag him and let him know what you think. I mean, that's a collective way for her to try to get an audience to side with her and bully him. What hasn't been mentioned yet, and maybe we skipped this, is that Clayton claims he's only had oral sex with her, whereas she claims that they had an intimate night together. That's important to know, folks, right? She claims they had an intimate night, um, that they were you know, sec sexually intimate, but she doesn't say that they had sex, which they didn't, according to Clayton. Uh, she also redacted that information when trying to share her side of the story. She redacted the part where Clayton said, you know, we just had oral sex. I don't think I've got you pregnant. And then she shared after she had gaslighted him, she shared, you know, his response of maybe you are pregnant. See, he believes I might be pregnant. Well, that's because, you know, you manipulated his brain, uh, which, you know, it's easier uh, done than you would think, actually, because I've also felt manipulated here. I can now speak on this topic. The statement shows how she was hoping to use social media and the internet to harass Clayton. In Clayton's own filing of an injunction against harassment against Miss Jane Doe, he detailed how she would create multiple phone numbers and emails to contact him when he would block her. Also, for a woman who is supposedly seven months into a high-risk pregnancy with twins, she would undoubtedly have multiple appointments that would require her leaving her house more than five times. Earlier, you know, I've been to the doctor about ten times for my pregnancy. Um, also, for a woman who is supposedly seven months into a high-risk pregnancy. Okay. Earlier this morning, she said, around 4.30, I found myself on the floor overwhelmed with emotions, feelings more bullet, feeling more bullied and alone than I've ever felt. The response, for a woman that is supposed to be seven months pregnant with twins, finding herself on the floor is extremely unlikely as any pregnant woman can attest to at that stage in pregnancy. So then Jane Doe says, it struck me that maybe it's time to stop concealing what I've desperately tried to keep under wraps for months now. I've come to understand that by not being public about what I'm struggling with, I've made this battle harder for myself. And she goes on and on and on. The response, she seems to imply that it was Clayton who told her to go to the tabloids in the first place. It was her who threatened to go to the tabloids as another manipulation tactic to get him to talk to her. Yeah, basically what happened, she was like, I'm gonna go to the tabloids. And he's like, go to the tabloids, whatever, you know. And then, oh, he wanted me to go to the tabloids. It's like, no, he didn't, but he was done dealing with your blank threats. At Clayton's uh, order of protection hearing, the judge acknowledged how those actions were alarming and for the purpose of harassing Clayton into contacting her. What she fails to mention is that her request for the paternity test came with stipulations, which included her allowing him to decide what happens with the pregnancy as long as he agreed to be in a relationship with her. This included her sending multiple versions of a relationship agreement that he would uh, that he would have to agree to in order for her to take the paternity test. As he would not agree to them under her terms, that's what she considered him ignoring her request. Eventually, they did get the paternity test done, four to be exact. I thought it was three, three or four, whatever. Three of which came back with l results of little to no fetal DNA. The remaining sample was degraded due to shipping delays and was unable to be tested. These tests range from the first week of October through the first week in December. She will continue. She will claim that the results are ongoing, which is easy for her to do if she continues to insist on retesting. How does a woman that is over 20 weeks pregnant with twins have little to no fetal DNA in her tests? Also, it's important to note that they don't send you documents when these tests come back as like not enough DNA, but we did contact and get, um, get at least, you know, audio evidence that they still have yet to find the fetal DNA. That's all, that's all we've said. Like, look, if he took the test and they said, well, she's got X amount of fetal DNA, it's enough to show that he's the father for unborn twins. I would, first of all, I would like to still, I would still be interested in the case, but I'd go, whoa, we've got a reputable, you know, laboratory here saying 
that he's the father of her unborn twins. Okay, we've got an ultrasound. We've got a video of an ultrasound. Okay, it appears it's not doctored. This appears to be real. I'm now changing my opinion that she is pregnant. We, that hasn't happened. We're not there yet. Okay, that hasn't happened. Um, I don't think we'll get there, is my opinion. When the results of the first test came back, Clayton posted a celebratory video on Instagram, not the best move admittedly, saying that the results were back in early and showed little to no fe fetal DNA. Now, my in respect for Clayton, it's hard, and in respect for Regina for this amazing article she wrote, it's hard to know what we would do in that situation, isn't it? Isn't it hard to know? You know, you might say, well, this isn't that big of a deal. Well, to Clayton, this is his world. This is his character. This is everything. It's his business. It's everything. So it's hard. It's just hard for us to judge in any way whatsoever, what we would do when we're vindicated of a crazy scandal like this. Miss Jane Doe response to this video was to immediately post on Reddit a recorded phone call of her speaking to Brett at Ravgen. In this call, she focuses on what Clayton has been told for the results and how the tests are still ongoing and she needs to come in for another sample. That was after the first time. Not once does she express any sort of concern about her unborn twins. It would be a natural instinct for a pregnant woman to immediately want to get in with an OB to confirm that she was still pregnant. I can totally confirm this, fe female, male, whatever. When I was at my um, uh, anatomy scan yesterday, I was scouring over over the ultrasound, making sure everything lined up. What's that? Is that a knee or an ankle? Are his feet okay? I'm looking at my son in my wife's womb and I'm just, I'm already stressed out. I'm already stressed out. Is he going to be okay? The heart rate's 150. That's, you say it goes between 110 to 160. 150 is on the upper end. Is he always up there or is he nervous? What can we do to calm down my son? I'm non, <laughs> I'm nonstop worried now as a parent to be that my son's going to be okay. What are we going to use for healthcare? Do we do a doula? Do we do, um, um, you know, uh, home birth? Is that is that safer than being in a hospital with the UV lights? That's what you think about when you're pregnant. These are the thoughts. And I guarantee to you, 100% of the people watching this right now who have had a baby or have been pregnant or have had a miscarriage are nodding their head. This is what you are about. Not going to the fucking sun. Not going to the mags, not filing claims with the FBI because no one believes your story because you've yet to provide any proof. So when we get upset, when we change the tone from jovial to really piercing, it's because this is real and she's making a mockery of it, is my opinion. So she calls this guy from Ravgen. Now, once does she express, you know, blah, blah, blah. And then here's what she had to say. She said, before the news hit the public, I pleaded with the media to keep my identity under wraps, and they agreed. However, their description of me as the anonymous woman contained enough details for those familiar with me to make connections and for strangers to track me down online. Regina's response says, no matter how anonymous Miss Jane Doe could try to be in her communication with the tabloids, her simply stating that she had filed a lawsuit in, in an Arizona family court was enough for anyone to find her identity online. Yeah, get mad at the sun for sharing that you were a TEDx talker and a podcast host. And, you know, they, whether you gave them their permission or not, you gave them enough evidence to kind of point people in your direction. Anyone with Google was able to find out who you were. Nobody cares. It's not about you. Don't make this about you. It's about Clayton Eckerd. It's about vindicating him and also making sure this just doesn't happen again. Uh, you know, she is on dating apps still. You know, she's on dating apps actively. Who's the next guy that doesn't follow these stories? So she said, like many, I was familiar with Reddit before news about my pregnancy became public, but I had no grasp of the level of dedication its members had. Shortly after the initial article surfaced, a friend reached out informing me that self-proclaimed sleuths were actively discussing and mentioning me by name in subreddit centered around The Bachelor. There was a barrage of misinformation circulating, and initially I wrote back to correct those who were getting the facts twisted. However, these so-called keyboard warriors, shielded by anonymous usernames, only seemed to intensify their interest in my life once they knew I was engaged engaging with them. This is a case where I actually appreciate the anonymity because people are doing a lot of good work and they wouldn't do this if there was fear they were going to get sued that's why there's only one or two people me reality steve really that have covered this with our name and face on it so the response by regina here is this engagement on reddit included uploading a link to a dropbox with her evidence on this dropbox she included screenshots of text from clayton that revealed his personal cell phone number and email so yeah for those wondering um this is the dropbox this is a clip from the dropbox so she 
she keeps all of her information on a Dropbox, which has been public. She shared it publicly. So that doesn't mean people need an email to get in. Maybe she maybe she changed the security settings. She shared this publicly to a public forum where you don't have to be you don't have to sign in. Anyone can go to Reddit and find this. She shared phone calls, she shared Clayton's personal information. She also shared the ultrasound, which we then found out was not actually hers. It was a seven year old video of twins. She claimed to be hers. She then claimed someone hacked her her um, Dropbox, which is similar claims she's made in the past when things don't necessarily go her way. Miss Jane Doe fails to mention that she first reached out to Reality Steve, a much bigger name in Bachelor Nation when it comes to content creation. She emailed him twice with her story. Emails she uploaded to her Dropbox, which I just shared, and was and he, and he was not interested. She doesn't appear to be upset about getting attention. She's upset that she is not getting the attention that she believes she deserves. And then she said, Dave has blatantly victim shamed me for my reproductive decisions, stating that my life would hold no interest for him if it weren't for two prior abortions. Well, here's the truth. Her life would have, I would, I would not be interested in her life if this wasn't in my niche. So that's just like a man who works at Jiffy Lube wouldn't be interested in Jane Doe's life unless she showed up with a car that had a combustible engine. Do you understand? She brought this into my playing field, which is the Bachelor News. I probably wouldn't have seen this if she did this to a guy who played baseball for the Oakland Athletics. Maybe there would be an Oakland Athletics news uh, uh, podcaster who would cover this story. It just so happens she brought this story to one of the most ravenous fan bases. That's very justice-oriented, by the way, um, and that was probably her biggest mistake. Whereas her previous two boyfriends, I guess, were guys that didn't have platform or an access, so she, this was able to kind of exist underneath the uh, radar there. Um Regina's response, this entire saga has not been about victim shaming Jane Doe for her reproductive decisions. It has been about her alleging pregnancy in order to emotionally manipulate men into dating her. One of the prior abortions that she mentions has a very strong resemblance to what she has been alleging with Clayton. Uh, excuse me here. This, and this is, and then this is what Jane Doe says. The source of the misinformation he's spreading traces back to two men I'd been pregnant by before. Their animosity against me, triggered by the restraining orders I have against them, is the driving force behind the distorted tales being circulated about me and ones they have shared with Dave. They supplied him with court documents contained entirely baseless, never seriously considered by a judge claims about me, which Dave has disseminated as if they were factual. I can disseminate court documents regardless on whether or not a judge decided they were factual or thrown out or whatnot. You know, take the Amber Heard v. Johnny Depp case. There was a lot of documents that the court um, would not uh, bring into the trial that were still public affidavits, depositions, things like that. Just because she doesn't believe these are accurate, I've shared the opinions of others in their sworn affidavits and this and that. And I think that's a, I think that's a safe thing to do. I think that I think we're okay to do that. People can make their opinions up if they think it's you know because I can understand I can understand people initially siding with her, going, oh, she's got these restraining orders against these guys. Clearly, they've got an axe to grind. You know, they, they want nothing to do with her. They want to move on with their life. Miss Jane Doe implicates these two men. However, there has been no proof to substantiate her claims that either of them supplied these documents. So much so that I've received the court documents from the, or the, the police documents from Scottsdale police last week, as you guys know, we shared it here where she had a, a um, detective from the domestic violence unit uh, probably spent about a whole day going through Reddit and, and their findings were that there's no proof that these Redditors that are doing all of this research are Greg and Mike, these exes of hers. There's no proof of that. And she's, in, she's used incredible bandwidth, incredible bandwidth of taxpayer money that's meant for victims and, and this and that. And she's, she's clogged the drains here like she just had a all-you-can-eat Taco Bell session. She says, although their accusations were unequivocally uh, tr untrue. They were mortifyingly embarrassing and not something I wanted anyone to know. My decision to stay silent inadvertently bolstered Dave's platform, giving him free reign to harass me without facing any consequences. Now, her decision to remain silent, uh, I mean, she was threatening to sue me for months and everyone else who covered this. So even though she might have publicly remained silent, um, she was very much um, engaged in this chess match here. 
Dave has faced consequences, including incurring legal fees to fight Jane's filings and protecting his own freedom of speech. We showed that $10,000 uh, uh, check. I've already cut my lawyer. Uh, the allegations they had previously made against me in response to cases I filed against them were horrendous, alleging that I falsified my pregnancies, tampered with records regarding my past pregnancies, and fabricated the severity of the injury, injuries I sustained due to abuse. In a desperate effort to get him to stop spreading false and extremely damaging information about me, I offered to sign a release to have my previous uh, pregnancy records sent to directly to him from my providers. I sent him proof that I was one of only 630 patients accepted into the domestic violence. I've, I've never cared about the fact that she's in a domestic violence brain injury program. None of this, you know, I've never received, um, uh, you know, no one, she says she's, she does, she does this. She says, I've, I've, I've offered to send him proof of all my previous pregnancies. Yeah, I've read it. They're not ultrasounds. They're not court. They're not like professional things. They're just like something a doctor wrote down. It's like, yeah, what, what the what the fuck is this? You know, you look at it, you go, what the fuck is this? I don't. I'm not an expert, but what is this? Uh, claiming that Dave Neal doesn't care for the truth is entirely false, as he has been committed to bringing Jane's harassment against Clayton to light and state that Jane has not provided verifiable evidence that she is pregnant. She is simply upset that he doesn't believe what she is trying to claim is the truth. That, and this is another thing she does. She'll privately send things and say, I, I say you this. Well, send it to the send it to the Reddit. Let everyone else poke holes through through that history. Because, you know, it's almost like it's easier to make a fool out of one person. It's easier to try to convince one person at a time. But when you share your evidence with the whole crowd, people go, that, this, she used that word here and this over there. And people can just connect the web of lies so easily. She said, Dave's motivation in continuing to create content about me has been the massive surge in viewers and listeners on his monetized platforms by peddling sensationalized entirely untrue tales about my life. He claims that he doesn't take his shit without monetizing it. And so his motivation is clearly financial. Dave puts out so much content that it feels like doing damage control is a full-time job. He posts three shows, usually one about me to YouTube and two podcasts a day. Each time it sparks a wave of discussions that only add more fuel to this never-ending fire. I mean, I don't want to get involved in the whole capitalistic thought about not doing anything thing with you know not doing you know not taking a shit without monetizing it but it's like she also monetized her story of dv she made a tedx talk about it she might not have gotten paid for it, but it would draw traffic to her podcast which uh was monetized when she was actually making content um so i mean that's a tough argument yeah would i be making youtube videos if it didn't pay my bills probably not i mean not not to the extent that i do now it's my job yeah i, I go to work i show up i, I put a shirt on Maybe I don't have pants on, but I still I put a shirt on. I do the bare minimum. Um, but to say that I've uh, gained a, a crazy amount of followers, that's not true. That's not true at all. Um, I, uh, I'm This month, I have 850,000 views. Um, I, I had more in the spring. My views have probably gone down a little bit covering this. This takes a hell of a lot of resources to cover. I could make five videos of Bachelor content. That's not this. That's so-and-so, uh, this, so-and-so. I could do that. This takes way more time to do, folks. Way more time and energy. So to think that I am just running the gravy train here is patently false. And I can show all of the results of that. Has my podcast made more money? Yes, I've doubled up my episodes, which have nothing to do with her. I cover entertainment news. I'm able to walk and chew gum at the same time, fight these harassment charges, make all this content, and continue doing my podcast twice a day. Can she say the same? No, I don't think so. The entire time that Dave Neal has been putting out videos, Miss Jane Doe has continued to email him, threatening him with legal actions and self-harm, as well as sending him even more evidence to try to prove her case. Um, and then she says, Dave's enormous following on Reddit has made my life incredibly difficult. For I don't have a following on Reddit. I have people that are following this case because I'm the one talking about it and exposing it, okay? I'm banned on certain subreddits. Reddit generally doesn't like me that it's not it's not a place i like to go there have been great people in that community that have supported me but that's because they understand the injustices that are happening you know what i mean um she says she's got this reputation she's trying to uh you know um, uh, you know, whatever she says here, you can read it. The response, the reputation that she has painstakingly built off of her own father's success and reputation. Her achievements have come from the privilege she has been provided her entire life. One of her bigger successes in, is her podcast, which hasn't had any new episodes in over a year. Instead, the episodes are recycled and promoted as new content. She is her own keyboard warrior who has been able to devote her time to harassing and threatening anyone who has tried to touch this story. Um, 
And then she shares comments other people said about her and uh, and all of that. Uh, what has reached a level of obsession is Jane's continued claim that she is pregnant with Clayton's twins and now she would create new phone numbers and emails to continue her harassment of him. This includes reaching out to Clayton's parents when he refused to talk to her, sending Clayton four versions of a relationship non-disclosure agreement to exclusively date in exchange for giving him full control over the outcome of the pregnancy is obsession. Somehow Dave reporting on publicly available documents in the family court case constitutes discussing her life through quote, his lens of lies. She said, I would be lying if I said I wasn't afraid of Dave. During one of his live streams, he inadvertently displayed a map leading to my home. And then Regina says, I will admit that never should have happened. But once again, additional context is missing. This map leading to her home was actually a map to an Airbnb listing of Miss Jane Doe, the address of which was posted publicly on Instagram and included Miss Jane Doe's Instagram handle in the bio. When I, While I understand that this should have never happened and is an invasion of privacy, if she was in fear of the online harassment she was already receiving, why would she risked putting this information out there in the first place. Now, by all means, the image that was shown, which I'd be happy to share with the court if that's, if that's what she's going to use in her case against me, was somebody sent into my tip line, you know, it was like an open DM, a line that showed that her Airbnb uh, was far away from the city center. And the uh, intention behind that email was to share that she's... Um, not in a profitable area because it, it, it's kind of complicated, but basically it was in the defense that I'm not defaming her because if she's going to try to claim like her Airbnb has lost money, it's like no one's done anything to dox her Airbnb. It's like if people want to stay at her Airbnb, great. You know what I mean? You know, but that was an email that I did not maliciously share. It just popped up behind me on a, on an, uh, you know, blurred out. You cannot read street names or anything like that. So all you could do is look at that and go, well, her Airbnb is a stick down from the city center. You know what I mean? It's not, it's, it's not the street corner or any of that. Um, but she will use it in that case. In an interview this week, his comments even made more alarming as he said he wishes I'd have been a passenger on the missing Malaysian Flight 370. Of course, I made a joke that I wish she would disappear. Yet another example of evidence that she sent to Dave Neal as well as uploaded to her Dropbox, which she shared to Reddit. That being um, um, uh, da, 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 she, that she sent a, um, a photo uh, from the broad down of her belly. And she, she's accusing me of revenge porn, even though she publicly shared that on her Dropbox. Uh, miscarriages shouldn't be something joked or lied about. As Mr. Neal's own wife is pregnant, he he would not make such a comment if he truly believed her story. Oh, you know, and, I, and I've got years of content which shows our audience, full women, 92% women, our audience knows we fight for single moms. We're a big single mom community here. We do toy drives for kids. We care about teachers and getting their wish list filled. No, at no point would I trivialize something so serious and so personal. In fact, most of the content we try to make when it's not lighthearted and fun, uh, gossipy and things like that is, you know, think pieces about topics that are very tough to consider, uh, race, class, um, gender, things like that. I mean, the, the Bachelor is a real um, great stepping stone for difficult conversations. However, the state of Arizona requires death certificates for any miscarriages after 20 weeks. She bypassed that milestone in her own testimony in Clayton's order of protection hearing on November 2nd, 2023, when she indicated that she was 24 weeks along. Miss Jane Doe is potentially going to use serious trauma that women go through for miscarriages in order to protect herself from ever having to take accountability for all of her lies. Uh, Miss Jane Doe has no right to say what Mr. Neal. So she said, as a last result, I filed an injunction against harassment against Dave due to his obsessive interest in me and his flat out refusal to stop making videos and podcasts about me when asked. Well, she said she would drop the harassment lawsuit if I took my videos down. So it clearly just shows she just wants to silence me. However, when I informed him that he would be served by a process server, he turned the tables. Deceptively, he began painting himself as fearful of me. His followers swiftly joined in, spreading these unfounded notions that I might pose a threat. I've been called unhinged an innumerable amount of times, and his followers have posted countless times that I need to be institutionalized. It's been outrageous, entirely unwarranted, and incredibly upsetting. I'll let you guys decide if it's outrageous, unwarranted, and incredibly upsetting. So yeah, what happened was I shared, um, uh, let me find it here, um, da, 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 this, or I mean, I've never shared this before, but this is the receipt she sent to me, which had my home address saying, uh, there's a process server serving you a restraining order today. Isn't that a threat? I'm going to, I'm paying a man, uh, you know, the premium amount of money to Go to your house and find you. So the next time you check your mail or go to work or the next time, you know, I, I had to walk my fucking wife to her car for two weeks. Do you understand?
Now, this was never served. She thought it would be, but it was never served because it was denied, which I didn't find out for weeks. I didn't find out for weeks that it was denied, but the restraining order was denied uh, for this reason. The allegations in the petition are conclusory, not specific as to date, time, message, and potentially involve core First Amendment concerns. Restricting potentially protected speech without a hearing could constitute a prior restraint. A hearing will be necessary to ascertain if the communications are not protected, amount to harassment, cyberstalking, revenge, porn, defamations, etc. So... That's, that's the gravity of the, the, the part she's not talking about, that she dangles these things over your head. She says, oh yeah, I got a process server coming your way. She spends daddy's money, you know, here's daddy's money here, coming to your house, fucking with your life. Miss Jane Doe has no right to say what Mr. Neal and his family are feeling in the situation. He has a right to fear for his own safety. Yeah, imagine, and, the, and, and, by, the, and by the way, this is the type of shit. I'm not a big gender guy. I'm not a men's rights guy. You know, my, my audience is all women. I keep on saying that, just, you know, I'm not pushing anybody away. But for her to have the audacity to say, I'm not allowed to feel fear for my family in ways that I can't protect my family. What if I have a stand-up show out of town? I, I, know, I know this person who I've considered to be unhinged, knows my address, knows my car, can swing by at any time. Get the hell out of here. He has a right to fear for his own safety as well as the safety of his wife, who recently announced her pregnancy on Thanksgiving. Those that have been following the story have a right to be alarmed as Miss Jane Doe continues to drag this out beyond normal comprehension and reason. Uh, so then she says, um, you know, she says this, I kindly ask not to receive congratulations or engage in discussion about Clayton and my pregnancy. So in the end of her article, she says, I don't want to talk about the pregnancy anymore. Quite a coincidence that, and this is Virginia's response, quite a coincidence that after a fourth DNA result came back earlier this week showing little to no fetal DNA in the paternity case potentially being closed, she says that she will not engage in discussions about it. This entire post is about her deflecting attention away from the fact that she is not pregnant. Miss Jane Doe's injunction against harassment was filed the same day Clayton posted the video regarding the test results. This was after he had filed against her. The exhibits that were submitted for Clayton's hearing for his order of protection against Miss Jane Doe, one including a text message from May 25th, 2023 from Clayton, Clayton that said, I'm debating filing a police report. Please leave me alone. So clearly Clayton thought she was unhinged. This was sent five days after their sexual encounter and before Miss Jane Doe allegedly found out she was pregnant. Long before any of this was in public, she was harassing him enough for him to want to file a police report. If you're interested in seeing the entire OOP hearing, the first and second parts are available in full on YouTube. And then she uh, goes to continue... Over the last few months, I've questioned, what is the allure of a 33-year-old woman confirmed to be pregnant three times to him and his audience? How much more content can he create and how much more can I take? Although I would be more than entitled to file a defamation lawsuit against Dave, I have no desire to have my life drained by the legal system and simply want him to stop and remove the videos. Morning after she makes that claim, I get another threat of a defamation lawsuit, including I actually got one yesterday. I think it's right here. Let's see if, let's see if this is it. Um, nope, that's not the one. Um, it's, it's somewhere in here, uh, but either, um, it must be this one. Uh, sorry, hold on. I mean, these just, they, they come and they come and they come. So I got this a few days ago. Um, oh no, that's a different one. Either way. Oh boy. Too many notes. I, but, uh, yeah, I, the point was, is that they got a final, a final straw. I will sue you for defamation if you just stop, you know, whatever. So anyway, we received all of that. Um, uh, but, uh, she continues, uh, Regina says she is still continuing legal action against him, including reaching out to the district attorney of Los Angeles, as well as the FBI, which again, we shared right here for this is, this is from her mouth. You know, no, no, no hacking her account here. A formal complaint filed with the Internet Crime Complaint Center has led to the investigation by the FBI into potential, potential federal crimes by Mr. Neal, including violations, blah, blah, blah. They sent local authorities to my home yesterday to obtain more information and were deeply disturbed by Mr. Neal's clear obsession with me. I also contacted the Los Angeles Police Department, who is diligently investigating potential violations of penal codes. I have a call today with a detective to discuss this further. My lawyer had to call the Federal Bureau of Investigation, and confirmed that they're actually not investigating me. But what she said at the bottom here is interesting. I've also sought support from reproductive rights groups regarding Mr. Neal's distasteful comments and even prepared a reel of his most egregious statements for them. They found this. They found his commentary, especially that he wouldn't be interested in me if I hadn't had prior abortions, deeply disturbing. They have shown a willingness to assist me in halting this unwarranted victimization. So again, cherry-picked information that really doesn't prove her case at all. I have no interest in her. I have an interest in justice, in truth, and in Bachelor Nation news. Um, wouldn't that be wild if I'm not allowed to share news? I mean, what are you talking about? Um, all right. So anyway, let's just wrap this puppy up. Um, 
Uh, she shared a video of me and blah, 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 which she's not allowed to do. Um, also, in, I mean, you know, she, she rips videos from YouTube and puts them under Dropbox. It's a violation. Same thing with Patreon. Not allowed to do that. Uh, here's what Regina said. Almost inadvertently, Miss Jane Doe has shown one of her manipulation tactics as she claims self-harm. This is emotional abuse. Yeah, she claims that the blood would be on my hands. Like, let's see where it says. Yeah, here it is. I've even expressed to Dave that the blood would be on his hands if I harmed myself due to his relentless harassment, but it had no impact on him. Fuck her. Fuck her for saying it didn't have any impact on me. The fuck out of here with that bullshit. That's absolutely ridiculous for her to say it has no impact on him. But I'll tell you what she's doing here. She's poking and she's prodding because she wants to get a reaction because it's fun, right? No, of course it had a, an, an impact on me. That's why, because of that email, I stopped reading her emails. They go directly to my lawyer. It's going to cost me a boatload of money, but I don't want to, for my own mental health, read her emails or watch any of her stuff. I, I am in a no contact place with what she has going on. I'm continuing to share court documents and things like that. She has sucked me into this court case as a way to, I don't know, just pull down another man here. I don't know. I, did, you know, do you get a little quill, a quiver, you know, whatever, when you, you know, piss off another guy? Oh, I sent another guy to therapy here. I win another star. I don't know how it works. Also, inadvertently, Miss Jane Doe has shown one of her ma manipulation tactics, which I just showed that she threatened me with self-harm. Uh, she should be no advocate for cyberbullying as she continues her smear campaign of Clayton, including reaching out to m uh, mental health organizations that he works with in order to hurt his reputation. She has also reached out to the real estate board in Arizona to file a complaint against Clayton when he didn't submit her offer on a house. No specifics have been given, which was ultimately cleared. My guess is, is that he wanted uh, that, that he was technically still a real estate agent, but he was going no contact with her because he felt like she was kind of like wild. And because of that, my guess is because of that, she filed a complaint like, oh, he won't even talk to me. Contractually, he's supposed to. My guess is he was like, get out of here. Go file and, you know, whatever. When the private avenues have failed to get the results that she wants, she's gone public with a story that made Clayton look bad and drag him to court. Most likely, most, uh, most likely more enraged by the support that Clayton has been getting. When Clayton was finally starting to be vindicated in the saga, Mr. Neal received an article from a Chase J. Jones that was trying to cancel Clayton. Anyone on TikTok in the last two to three months would remember the viral penguins waddling out and dancing to a rap song. Clayton, Clayton danced to that song and uploaded to TikTok. That's what provoked this article. And, um, uh, da -da, she, you know, shares this whole article here. Um, uh, how, you know, whatever. Okay. So, so it ends. So it ends. Okay. We made it to the finish line. Sorry. I'm sort of out of breath here as we cover it all. Is there anything I missed here? I shared with you the struck down temporary restraining order. And again, this might be, um, this might sound like I've uh, redundant to a lot of you, but for anyone who's new and just catching up on this now, it's important that they see that, um, my own videos, which are all here and you can judge for yourself have been have led her to file complaints with the FBI, LAPD, Scottsdale police. I mean just because any 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 anyone who would listen to her um and, and um and even after the Scottsdale police and apparently the FBI and everyone looked into it, we're still here. Um Clayton this week filed this affidavit of non-paternity. He's refusing to let it go. He says, "I want to prove I'm not the father." Is that the action of somebody who secretly did bang her and doesn't want us to know? He's saying, I want to prove I'm not the father. I don't want this going away. I want the court to know I'm not the father. And not only that, that she's not pregnant. So either way, we paid this check. Again, if this makes anyone feel a certain way and you want to donate to the legal funds, I've got my Clayton, uh, my defense fund here, uh, wherever it is. There'll be a link below. We've raised money and we're going to need a lot more to continue to fight this. If you don't pay, I will. That's totally fine. But if you enjoy this content and have a little extra Christmas bonus, by all means, link in the comment section below or you can join the Patreon, which is another great way to support. We'll be live at the 10 a.m. hour, patreon.com slash Dave Neal. Thank you so much to Bachelor Nation for supporting truth. We'll be back right after this.